Hello then, welcome to the clinic. So today is another ASMR meets Minecraft. Due to popular demand, we're going to revisit the model human eye here and make the video a little bit more detailed and relaxing than previously. Look to make some improvements. So just looking at the surrounding area, you have your eye clinic here where the optometrists and ophthalmologists work in conjunction. You have your dispensing clinic over there and just some further construction has been taking place in the peripheral areas there. Okay, so it's a very scenic location. You have your river here. and some beautiful trees making the area look very interesting. Let's start our attention where we should be, the model eye. Let's go to have a little panoramic look at the model eye here. So we have your optic nerve head here. We'll cover the posterior aspect a little later. The actual length of the eye, on average, from back to front there, is approximately 22.22 millimetres. And we'll come back to the anterior aspect of the eye here. So starting at the very front, this area represented by the glass, is the cornea of the eye. That should be the transparent front layer of the eye. You have your epithelium at the front, your superficial layer. You have your thicker stroma and the inner layer is the endothelium. So that is the cornea there, the transparent layer of the eye, the refracting surface and this should be covered by a good supply of tears and the white of the eye the external tunic is the sclera and if we come to the junction here the corneoscleral junction you have your area known as the limbus there and within the eye at the junction you have your anterior angle something we can check on the slit lamp we can check the openness of the angle right so we'll enter the eye in a second from the front so the area represented by the cerulean blue color here is the iris and the hollow centre is the pupil where light travels through. Now within the iris there are two muscles that work to control the size of the pupil. You have your sphincter muscle and your dilator muscle there. It has sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous innovation which is why when you're scared, nervous, alert your pupil will be more dilated due to sympathetic innovation and it says here the glass represents the cornea and focus is light, is it filled with liquid? absolutely right within the anterior chamber there is a liquid and the liquid is known as the aqueous humor there. Because the chamber maintains the shape. We have a little bit of detail about the iris there, allowing light to travel through. Okay, let's have a look inside the anterior chamber. So if we slowly make our way, from the 
superior aspect of the eye. We are next to the iris here. There's the pupil. And there is your aqueous humour, represented by the flow of liquid there, which will fill the entire anterior chamber there. We'll make our way to the anterior angle, just here. So here is the anterior angle of the eye, which we want to pay attention to. If we're looking for signs of glaucoma, we want to note the openness of the angle here. And the majority of the aqueous humour travelling through the pupil into this chamber will drain through the trabecular meshwork here. Trabecular meshwork. Now the angle is 360 degrees in the chamber, as is the trabecular meshwork. And here we're just resting against the endothelial surface of the cornea, which acts as a pump. So it can um, selectively uptake certain components and maintain the transparency of the overall cornea there. So just looking through the pupil, we shall enter the eye from the lateral side there. And just going up. One further thing to note, the movement of the eye is controlled by six extraocular muscles, which aren't represented by this model. So you would have your superior rectus, have your medial and lateral rectus, inferior rectus, inferior oblique, and the superior oblique muscle attached, the superior aspect. They allow the eye to move left, right, up and down, diagonally, and to rotate. We've covered the front of the eye. Let's skip to the posterior aspect. So the optic nerve carries the information gathered in the eye to the brain where it is processed. In particular, the visual cortex into an image. This channel carries blood to and from the eye. So blood to the eye comes from the central retinal artery and blood drainage comes from the central retinal vein. There is the optic nerve, your nervous tissue. And another thing that isn't represented by this model are the long and short posterior ciliary arteries that pierce the eye in various locations around here. So that is the posterior aspect. We've covered the front. Let's enter the model eye. Have a little look. So we enter the eye's vitreous chamber. So we are now officially in the jelly of the eye known as the vitreous humour, which gives the eye its shape. From top to bottom, side to side, this shall be filled with vitreous. And if you see visual flouters, they are created actually in the vitreous of the eye. And they float around, they shift, as your eye changes direction and they are visualized against a blue sky 
or particularly a white ceiling. So you are now in the vitreous humour of the eye. A further note here, clear liquid, it maintains the shape, transmits light. If your vision is cloudy, maybe because the liquid is cloudy, okay, whatever that means. Right, so another important structure within the eye is the crystalline lens. Here. This is the crystalline lens and there are zonules attached to the lens. These zonules are attached to the ciliary body and the ciliary body is what produces the aqueous humour that travels through the posterior chamber behind the iris and into the anterior chamber there. What does it say about the lens? It allows Valks's light into the eye, it flexes and changes shape to change focus, so it can relax and it can accommodate. And there is the ciliary body, the muscle that manipulates the lens through the attachment of the zonules which aren't visualised here. Okay, so we've covered that. So another important thing to note, when you develop cataracts, they develop within the crystalline lens here. So when you have surgery to remove your cataract, this is the area of attention the ophthalmologist shall be looking at remove your cataract and place an implant into the lens sac there, the lens sac. So that is a useful thing to note. There is the posterior iris surface and that would be quite pigmented. So pigment isn't really represented too well here. So we'll have pigment posterior surface and at the iris border a little bit of pigment right so just looking here this line shows the light entering the eye focused by the cornea restricted by the iris passing through the pupil so let's focus into room which is where they turn into sensory data the walls of this room are called the retina Peripheral vision, spotted this line, it's got the macula. Okay, so the orange walls represent the retina, the inner tunic of the eye, with the middle being the vascular choroid between the retina and the sclera. Now within the retina, there are photoreceptors, rods and cones that capture light and convert it to chemical energy and that can travel from the messages to the optic nerve and off to the brain for interpretation. And the peripheral retina, so this area here, you have your highest density of rods, particular photoreceptor, and their density decreases if you move towards the macula. And conversely, the macular region, you have your highest concentration of cones, the other photoreceptor, the so highest concentration there, and they decrease in quantity as you move towards the peripheral retina. Okay. Macula. This is a small extra sensitive area of your retina. That's correct. It gives you the focus spot, the center of your vision. 
the light from the lens is focused on this spot. So when you're looking directly at something, the light will travel straight to the macula area. The center of the macula is known as the fovea. And in most cases, it has this little dip. And in young healthy patients, we usually see a foveal reflex in this area here. So the retina gives you peripheral vision, actually gives you central vision, your sharp point, excellent. If you wonder why your vision is clearest in the middle, that becomes more blurry in the center. Okay. So all you need to know is this is the macular region, your sharp pinpoint fine vision area of the eye. The center is the fovea. You have your peripheral retina here. And finally within the eye, you have the head of the optic nerve here. As you can see coming in, you have your central retinal artery and its branches. And these will branch off with little uh, capillaries to nourish the retinal tissue. And the blood draining from the eye shall reach the central retinal vein. They come from these branches here. So central retinal artery and the central retinal vein within the optic nerve head. So the nerve fibers capture light energy. The image is transmitted through nervous tissue. And they all aggregate at the optic nerve head, where we have approximately 1.2 million nerve fibers. And they travel off to the brain there. Okay, through the visual pathway. So when we're looking uh, for signs of macular degeneration, we'll be looking in this area here. And if we're looking for signs of glaucoma, I'll pay a particular attention to any changes of the optic nerve head, such as cupping, depth of cupping, loss of any neural retinal rims, as well as various other indicators and as well as checking the intraocular pressure within the, or of the aqueous humor within the anterior chamber there. Right, so let's go back out. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the human eye in a Minecraft model form. I have to say goodbye to everybody and anybody associated with the optometry clinic here. And we'll say goodbye to the animals. They have their little play area here. And I'll see you again next time.